Chapter 8 of Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Vendetti. Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics by George Washington Plunkett. Chapter 8 Ingratitude in Politics. There's no crime so mean as ingratitude in politics but every great statesman from the beginning of the world has been up against it. Caesar had his Brutus, that king of Shakespeare's, Leary, I think you call him, had his own daughters go back on him, Platt had his Odell, and I've got my, the McManus. It's a real proof that a man is great when he meets with political ingratitude. Great men have a tender, trusted nature so have I, outside of the contracting and real estate business. In politics, I have trusted men who have told me they were my friends. And if traitors have turned up in my camp, well, I only had the same experience as Caesar, Leary, and the others. About my Brutus, McManus, you know, has seven brothers, and they call him The, because he is the boss of the lot and to distinguish him from all the other McManuses, for several years he was a political bushwhacker. In campaigns he was sometimes on the fence, sometimes on both sides of the fence, and sometimes under the fence. Nobody knew where to find him at any particular time, and nobody trusted him, that is, nobody but me. I thought there was some good in him after all, and that if I took him in hand, I could make a man of him yet. I did take him in hand a few years ago. My friends told me it would be the Brutus Leary business all over again, but I didn't believe them. I put my trust in the. I nominated him for the assembly, and he was elected. A year afterwards, when I was running for re-election as senator, I nominated him for the assembly, again, on the ticket with me. What do you think happened? We both carried the 15th Assembly District, but he ran away ahead of me. Just think, ahead of me in my own district? I was just dazed. When I began to recover, my election district captains came to me and said, that McManus had sold me out with the idea of knocking me out of the senatorship and then trying to capture the leadership of the district. I couldn't believe it. My trust in nature couldn't imagine such treachery. I sent for McManus and said, with my voice trembling, with emotions, they say you've done me dirt. The? It can't be true. Tell me it ain't true. The almost wept as he said he was innocent. Never have I done you dirt, George, he declared. Wicked traitors have tried to do you. I don't know just who they are yet but I'm on their trail, and I'll find them, or abjure the name of the McManus. I'm going out right now to find them. Well, the kept his word as far as going out and finding the traitors was concerned. He found them all right and put himself at their head. Oh, no, he didn't have to go far to look for them. He's got them gathered in his club rooms now and he's doing his best to take the leadership from the man that made him. So you see, that's Caesar and Larry's, and me in the same boat. Only I'll come out on top, while Caesar and Larry went under. Now let me tell you that the ingrate in politics never flourishes long. I can give you lots of examples. Look at the men who done up Roscoe Conkling, when he resigned from the United States Senate and went to Albany to ask for re-election. What's become of them? Passed from view like a moving picture. Who took Conkling's place in the Senate? Twenty dollars even that you can't remember his name without looking in the almanac. And poor old Platt? He's down and out now, and Odell is in the saddle. But that don't mean that he'll always be in the saddle. His enemies are working hard all the time to do him, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he went out before the next state campaign. 
The politicians who make a lasting success in politics are the men who are always loyal to their friends, even up to the gate of state prison if necessary, men who keep their promises and never lie. Richard Crocker used to say that telling the truth and sticking to his friends was the political leader's stock in trade. Nobody ever said anything truer, and nobody lived up to it better than Crocker. That is why he remained leader of Tammany Hall as long as he wanted to. Every man in the organization trusted him. Sometimes he made mistakes that hurt in campaigns, but they were always on the side of serving his friends. It's the same with Charles F. Murphy. He has always stood by his friends, even when it looked like he would be down for doing so. Remember how he stuck to McClellan in 1903, when all the Brooklyn leaders were against him, and it seemed as if Tammany was in for a grand smash-up? It's men like Crocker and Murphy that stay leaders as long as they live, not men like Brutus and McManus. Now I want to tell you why political traitors, in New York City especially, are punished quick. It's because the Irish are in a majority. The Irish, above all people in the world, hates a traitor. You can't hold them back when a traitor of any kind is in sight, and remember in old Ireland, they take particular delight in doing up a political traitor. Most of the voters in my district are Irish or of Irish descent. They've spotted the McManus, and when they get a chance at him at the polls next time, they won't do a thing to him. The question has been asked, is a politician ever justified in going back on his district leader, I answer? No. As long as the leader hustled around and gets all the jobs possible for his constituents, when the voters elect a man leader, they make a sort of a contract with him. They say, although it ain't written out, we've put you here to look out for our interests. You want to see that this district gets all the jobs that's coming to it. Be faithful to us, and we'll be faithful to you. The district leader promises, and that makes a solemn contract. If he lives up to it, spends most of his time chasing after places in the departments, picks up jobs from railroads and contractors for his followers, and shows himself in all ways a true statesman, then his followers are bound in honor to uphold him just as they're bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States. But if he only looks after his own interests or shows no talent for sending out jobs or ain't got the nerve to demand and get his share of the good things that are going, his followers may be absolved from their allegiance, and they may up and swat him without being put down as political ingrates. End of chapter 8